I have an odd habit a friend recently picked up on, a habit I developed about a year ago. He noticed that when I entered a room, any room, and shut the door, I turn my face away from it and close my eyes until I hear the lock click. Only after the door is fully closed will I open them. He gave me a hard time about it until I told him where it started. I work for a water seal company in St. Paul. We produce sealant for exposed wood, decks, boats, that kind of thing. You hear about sealant being a dirty word in the Ashland, Acre Falls, Ironton area, but not all those companies were part of the Ethor Summer that wiped out the local economy in the 1950s. I got sent to an industrial park outside of Acre Falls on business. I checked into the dismal hotel, the Hotel Umbra. It looked like a decor hadn't been changed since 1930. The lobby wallpaper had gone yellow from decades of cigarette smoke, and everything had a fine layer of dust, including the old man behind the front desk. I hoped that the room would be in better shape. Mine was on the fourth floor. Being an old place, the hotel had a rickety cable elevator, the kind with the double set of doors, one of those flexing metal gates, and a solid outer part of the door. I shut the gate and latched it, and pressed the tiny black button for my floor. Just as the outer elevators were about to close, I was startled by the face of a young woman rushing at the gap between them. She was too late, the door is shut, and after a moment the elevator ascended. I thought nothing of it, until I needed to take the elevator back down for one of my bags. I entered, pushed the button for the lobby, and pressed my tired back against the elevator wall opposite the doors. They had nearly completely shut, when again I was surprised by a woman's face moving toward the gap, staring into the elevator through the gap. Too late to place her hand in to stop the doors from closing, this time I sprang forward and held the door open button. After a moment, the doors lurched and slid open. I waited a moment. From the opening, I could see partly down the hallway, but no one in sight. Still holding the button down, I slid open the metal gate and craned my neck to the hallway to look down the other direction. No one. No trace of a girl. No recently shut hotel room door. No footsteps. No jingling of keys. I released the button, but not to lean back against the wall. I stood directly in front of where the gap in the doors would be, in the center of the elevator. After a pause, the outer doors again began to slide shut, to move toward each other until the space between them was the width of a young girl's face. In that quarter second, several fingertips appeared, followed immediately by her face again, rushing from around the corner, staring at me as the doors met. I had been watching the gap where I thought she might be, so I saw her. She was about thirteen years old, very plain, almost homely, with pale complexion, neck-length brown hair that looked must or slightly dirty. I didn't have time to glance down at her visible shoulder to see what she was wearing. From, from her behavior, I wondered if she was a runaway or a homeless person who had gotten into the building. She had a glassy, blank expression, tingling with a little depression, some distant desire or need, a look that could easily be accompanied by the words, Please help. The next time I passed the front desk, I asked the old man if he'd seen a young girl running through. Heard the stories then, he said, throat clearing, rocking against his seat. Young Maddie, been here a long time. Takes a liking to gentlemen guests, always been shy. Never said a word, not a word, just curious. I told him I hadn't heard any stories and that there had been a little girl taking the stairs and standing in front of my elevator on every floor. That's our Maddie, he said. She likes you then, sweet on you. She just wants to see, that's all, just to see. All she ever does, curious little thing, just wants to see. I stayed in the Hotel Umbra for three nights. It was a four-night business trip, and the last night I tried to sleep in my car. It didn't help. Let me tell you about young Maddie. You only catch glimpses of her, of a face, with a resigned look of quiet desperation, dominated by a pair of wide, dark eyes, locked doors, barricades, nothing made a difference. She gets inside. I never saw her for longer than half a second. Every time I laid eyes on her, she retreated instantly, only to appear again an hour or two later. An hour or two, if I was lucky. Let me tell you where I saw young Maddie. Every time I shut the door to my bathroom, my hotel room, I saw her. I watched as I shut it. The last possible second, I'd see the crescent of her face move fast at the gap. I'd throw the door open to find nothing. Every time I closed the closet door, 
I saw her. If I watched that gap, she'd suddenly be inside the closet, leaning her head against to watch me just as I shut it. It's as if she knew where to go, where to be, so my eye would meet hers. There was never any impact. Never a moment where she'd make contact with the door or the wall. The first time I sat at that writing table, I saw her. As I closed the large bottom drawer, she rusted the gap from inside the drawer. Her eyes wide, pleading for something I couldn't give, I pulled the drawer from its rails and threw it to the floor. I did spend that last night in my car, but like I said, it did no good. Tossing and turning on that rental car seat, the back ratcheted as far flat as it could be. I'd have to open my eyes sometimes, and in the side view mirror, or peeking over the hood of my car, once upside down at the top of the windshield as if she was on the roof back in St. Paul again, and I've been back for a year, but Maddie hasn't stopped. If I keep my eyes open long enough, if I watch a place long enough, I'll eventually catch sight of movement. Near the copier in my office, a pile of boxes in the alley, a column in a quiet parking lot, and my eye will get there just in time to see her retreating from my view. There's never anything there when I go to look, so I've stopped looking. I've had to change things since the Hotel Umbra. I've stopped looking. I keep my eyes shut when I close doors, and I shut drawers and, and cabinets, fridges, coolers, the trunk of my car. Not all spaces, just ones that are big enough. At least that's how it used to work. I was getting ready for bed a few nights ago, standing in front of my bathroom mirror, doors shut, cabinets shut, watching myself floss. I opened wide to get my molars. I swear, I saw fingertips retreat down the back of my throat.